and just pause and be still. area between your eyebrows, the Ajna. And just be still. And in your crown, your awareness is on the crown. And then just be still. Relax. So the glands and the will are intertwined. We'll talk about the will tomorrow. I wanted you, just as we've done all this work, doing the deep dive into this aspect, I just wanted you to feel like what's coming. Like you can feel everything we've done is very soothing. And then you do this, and it's a different kind of relaxation or soothing that's settling deeper into the body. So... um you want to share experiences or ask questions? I don't want to work you guys too hard. You already had a pretty long, long day, but we're going to work hard tomorrow too. But I want to discipline you.
we can do it again. Let's see if people have experiences and uh, questions, and then we'll do it again. You can unmute yourself. You can type in. How do you get myrrh out of a shirt? Um, set it on fire. <laughs> just pour it. You get the myrrh out, out, but the shirt just will <laughs> never be the same. No, I, yeah. I think if you just um, use alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, it should break. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. disappointed. I spilled. Did it, you do but... one of these? I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... But I feel so good after today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, doesn't the? I mean, every bit feels feels good. But even that myrrh is like, oh, like Samantha's yeah. like, yeah, we're doing that again. It's right? different. You're right. Yeah. It is different. Yeah, the other knocked me out. This one made me relax yet mm -hmm. energized. Yeah. Yeah. Still working the glands, and it has. Um, it's like it refines the will it elevates the will so that you're not in that um you know because in the, the other things that we were talking about like how you transition from like the lower nature to the higher nature part of the thing that makes you like kind of stay in a particular part of your nature is the will and so we go through and we transmute these parts and then we get to the will and it's like okay now let's ease that up Instead of being in the defense mode, let's move you up to one of the higher aspects of the will, because that's like even a spectrum going from being defensive all the way to, you know, the spiritual will where you're serving the soul or, you know, being curious about the environment. And then, you know, the emotional will, the mental will, which we'll go into tomorrow. But um, it's it's another aspect of the glands that when you're treating things you don't really take that into account the aspect of the will but some of the ability to shift the glands and the function of the glands depends on where the will is at or if you're able to shift the will to like a higher higher aspect of the will so the, kind of this is, huh? this is not as um I as what you're talking about, but um temperature wise, it feels like it's it's made my circulation increase. Like I'm yeah, it should. Yeah, I'm it should. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. So I know we've talked about this before. I just keep thinking that would this have to do with the brain waves too? Because it it really felt um... like a little bit of a different part of the I mean eventually yeah but okay. it's it's just a little bit different yeah so yeah yeah um the brain waves it will get pulled into the three brain stuff eventually yeah oh goody yeah yeah I mean everything we've been doing is going to get tied to it I mean we've been doing three brains for a very long time just now we're official Thanks, Craig. It's very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And go ahead, Margo. Hey, Margo. Hey, Greg. I feel like I should know this, but um, I would you say a little bit more about what the will is? I mean, um, I I feel like I don't understand what that means. And yeah, so the the will would be like your ability to take action. And I was going to do this tomorrow, but we could do it right now. Um, the ability would be like to take action and how you kind of govern yourself and move yourself through the world, be it through action or inaction. There's still like a choice of that. And then you break the will down into four components. So you have the physical will, the emotional will, the mental will, and the spiritual will. So they're all part of the will, but different aspects can be more dominant given the situation or our conditioning. And uh, the, the physical will associated with the basic chakra is very defense oriented. Like it's very defensive, you know, it's aggressive. Like even 
in old days where it was the hunter, you know, that had the killer instinct to be able to find the deer or the elk or whatever it is that's tied to the, the basic will. And you see this actually in sports where somebody has the ability to really excel in a sport. You know, there's other parts of the will that are involved with that, but a lot of it is the, the basic aspect. So it's very survival oriented. It protects the body. It helps the body thrive. It um, It's very def like defensive oriented. Um, and sometimes even your aggressions, you know, a person's aggressions could be coming from the basic chakra. Then you have the emotional will, which is the solar plexus. This is your ability to compare and choose and your ability to commit to something, right? So um, you could also say it's the commitment can be like, I want what I want and I'm not backing down. You're not really thinking out the consequences of it. You're just like, I'm standing my ground. I'm, I'm being aggressive. I'm being whatever. I'm, I'm not backing down. I'm, I'm sticking to what I want. And even devotional practices and like spiritual practices where somebody's committed to a particular, like, you know, Christians would be Christ or, or, you know, in, you know, the Hindu tradition, it might be Rama or something like that. But they're really just, it's all about that. It's, it's, that's what they've committed to. Um, so you could say you you commit to either good things or bad things, but you will commit to something, you know, you're, you're going to be devotional, you're going to be connected to uh, uh, something. And it is, kind of your constancy of aim like when you won't back down regardless of consequences that's that's emotional will and then you go up to the area between the eyebrows this is mental will so this starts to be more like you're taking into account consequences and and you're being much more strategic about something and um uh mental will is very like meticulous and uh like tenacious like you're just you stick with it no matter what because even emotions don't even play a role in that and you could say there's a greater depth of perception of the consequences of your action so it helps with strategy um you know like i'm going to do this to make my week better i'm going to get up at x amount of time to do this and then you get up and do whatever that's you using some mental will and um, the mental will is different from the emotional will because the emotional will is like i i want what i want i'm not backing down the mental will is i i might want this but is this the right thing to do right so it's it's more about doing the right thing rather than this is what I want. And so like um, mental will, like uh, say you're in an argument with, between two people, one has emotional will and one has mental will. And the emotional will is like, you know, you you did this, you did that. I'm not backing down da, 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 until I get my way. Mental will would be like, we're talking about politics we're not talking about things in the family or business whatever i'm going to apologize just to calm things down doesn't mean that i'm right or wrong but i'm going to i'm going to apologize just to calm things down because we're not talking about something important right so like um the thing i would say about mental will is it's flexible like when it's refined it's flexible when things are not that important and inflexible when things are important. Like if they were talking about the budget and if the company didn't keep the budget, it would go out of business. They're going to be very stern about the budget. But going back, talking about politics, like on a break with somebody and they get all worked up about it, you know, apologize just because you don't want to blow up the relationship. You don't want to sideline the work. You don't want disruption in the family, whatever it is. You know, you're doing the right thing rather than what you want. Then the spiritual will is, you know, at first it's a manifestation of do doing something for uh, 
something outside yourself. You know, you're taking action for something outside of yourself. So um, even com com being committed to a deity or a practice that's where you're you're looking beyond your wants and needs and you're you're trying to tap into something greater, you know, the manifestation of that is usually being of service, doing some acts of service for people, it might be your family or people you know, but it's also starting to be people that you don't know. And these acts of service is you just feel like compelled to do them. And really what you're doing is you're refining this aspect of the soul to eventually be um, more conductive to being guided uh, by the soul. Like you really start serving the soul rather than the lower nature. And when we're in like the the other three types of will, if the if the the crown, which is the spiritual will, is not refined, they still have a bit of a lower nature component to it. Like the mental will, if the heart's activated, they can be like kind of good with it. But if the heart's not activated, they'll be very ruthless, for example. And if the heart is activated with the solar plexus, um, uh, you know, the, the tendency is to, to committing to doing like good things and, and uh, sticking to your word and getting things done. If not, they just become combative, like they just become adversarial and argumentative and um, and the basic, if it's not really refined, the tendency is to get very defensive and very aggressive, really, really um, almost to the point, point of, you could say, like uh, violence, even if it's just with words and emotion um, or like um, an unregulated aspect of that will. So in, in a spiritual aspect, the will is also creative destruction. So it's a purification that can happen to make space or room for new growth or for um, the soul to come into a higher degree. And so that's kind of what the spiritual will is kind of trying to cultivate. But the, the will is... Um, like your ability to take action in the world. Even if you feel you're not willful, it still like can be the lack of will that keeps you from taking action in the world. But like how you express in the world, as soon as you start to do movement or action is based on will activity. How you interact is based on on the will. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. I mean, I feel like I, feel like I get it now. You yeah. know, language just really helps me. Yeah, exactly. And and the, and the thing with, the, um, you know, because a lot of times people will talk about will, but they talk about it as just like one thing. And there's um, d different aspects to the will. Like, you know, so when you look at it under those different aspects, it, it makes a lot more sense. Like, you know, because you can see like, at times it's this, and at times it's that, and at times it's you know, and it's it's interesting, like, you know, in the news, some, there are some scientists, I don't know, out on the West Coast or something that said he's been studying the will for all these years and that people don't have um, free will, right? And, you know, he's not the first one that has proposed that. And basically, like, a lot of times what they do is like, okay, they hook you up to electrodes and then they tell you, go left or go right. And then you choose and then they'll say well after a while you still are being held back by do you go left or do you go right and even free will would be what we were talking about earlier in the day you're standing at that crossroads you know do do i do i do this situation by by going down the road of hard knocks or do i transition out of this and do it through learning my lesson and kind of growing and evolving and um even that would be uh even different aspect than what we're talking about and so 
that that is what free will is in a nutshell is do i do i choose you know when when the heat is turned up do i choose the easy way or do i choose just the lower nature way or do i choose the higher nature way and so you know when i saw that article i was like oh about every five or ten years somebody does that you know does the whole free will thing it's usually some neuroscientist or something but i'm sure he's a very smart guy but then we just disagree with his conclusion well and it's sort of like he's not really getting the point right no exactly <laughs> exactly you nailed it right there i said a bunch of words you just nailed it <laughs> thanks so uh, much I mean, I really, so I, like okay i get it now i get it good. um yeah thanks good. you're so welcome just curious, what we just did with the MER segment to pain, does that refer to physical pain, emotional pain, or both, or something else? No, nope, all of that. Yeah. Um, pain and stress are both instinctual responses. And so pain and stress aren't always the same response. They can be. But um, here I was just being specific that it's hitting the instinctual response that's associated with pain. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just wanting you to talk more about the endocrine system correlated with the will. Because I reflect, <laughs> this is me. Sorry, guys. Um, just how when people's endocrine systems are basically not functioning well, not working well, a lot of times they'll just be almost shut down. Like they won't be able to make those yeah. decisions. They'll be tired. They are yeah. almost like going on. It, it, so, so it's all like what she said. It's like you stop taking appropriate action and then think about like things in your life sometimes um, where you got to like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. Or um sometimes the level or degree of effort will directly correspond to the refinement of the will and if a person has a hard time taking action you could say it's a will issue but i would also say it's probably more importantly an endocrine issue like the endocrine system is off and you know say say you have a project say you're you know you're doing whatever job and you have this project you can sit and talk about it but at some point you go okay i know uh, we might make mistakes we might do this we might do that but we got we got to start moving because if not we're not going to hit the deadline right and then you start doing it and like, oh, I might hit the deadline. And you're like, okay, we might hit the deadline, but the but our effort isn't good enough or our product's not good enough. We got to step up our game or somebody throws you a curveball or all of a sudden you can't get all the parts that you need. And you're like, uh, do I shut down? Do I call it quits? Or do I, do I step up my game and do I make it happen? And so you could say, when, when the will is getting refined, it starts to become easier and easier to take action. You, you stop being in your head as much because you're, you're like in motion. And it becomes easier and easier for you to problem solve and innovate, like in motion, almost like instantaneously. And it's just because all the parts, all the pieces are... are functioning properly and um the will is heavily impacted by stress it's heavily impacted by pain and it's heavily 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 impacted by um the endocrine system and by your connective tissue that's like why we're kind of doing some of the um, the body mapping stuff is postural alignments actually throw off the will and so by going through and 
unwinding these things, even if your body has a misalignment and it doesn't get corrected, if you unwind, unwind some of these body mapping stuff, you undo the effects of the misalignment. You know? And so, um, because it's, it's basically tied to fascia, like your connective tissue, not muscle, like the connective tissue. So, yeah. And since it throws off the will, does it throw off the endocrine system? Simultaneously? Yeah, it throws off the endocrine system. Like sometimes it's like it can be an action, but sometimes it's like aggression. It can be like violence. It can be um, uh, I knew this one guy who, who was a, a pretty passive guy and he got he got injured and as he came out of the injury like the body kind of recovered but he became incredibly aggressive like incredibly aggressive you know and so mm -hmm. the psychologist that I was working with, with at the time they were trying to evaluate like you know he's got PTSD he's got and there might have been some PTSD but I was like, look at his body alignment. His body alignment is what's causing the the aggression. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get to treat him. But changing his structure changed how he felt, how he thought, and how he behaved dramatically. Yeah. Yeah, I always felt bad for that guy. You know, but what can you do? You know. Yeah, so sounds like that's it. Thinking of the implications of PTSD here. Yeah, not all PTSD is PTSD, like you said. Um, there's PTSD, there's things in the body. And then there's other issues sometimes that get diagnosed as PTSD. So, um, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. But this could be used, I mean, for partially for, for treating some of those things. So, okay. So we'll be on for 10 a.m. tomorrow, Central Time. And remember, Monday night, we're going to do a body mapping uh, study group for the ones that took the class and um, uh, we will break for lunch tomorrow at noon uh, to do the Sunday session at Astara. It's 20 minutes if you want to join us. It'll be a little meditation slash healing and um, yeah, we'll have a nice mellow day tomorrow. So take care. <laughs>